Hey friends of Keycloak, nice to see you again. That's Nico's back and in this video I will talk about securing Keycloak with HTTPS on the transport layer with TLS certificates and doing mutual TLS on authenticating users with X509 client certificates. So let's do it. In an up-to-date environment, you should encrypt every HTTP um, communication through TLS and using HTTPS. So encrypt everything, no matter if it is local or private or public, encrypt everything. Um, a few years ago, Werner Fogels, the CTO of uh, AWS and Amazon, said on one of the keynotes of the AWS reInvent, um, encrypt everything and encrypt, uh, no, dance like no one is watching and encrypt like everything's watching. We've not taken encryption serious enough. Yeah? This is a, a quote I like to use. Yeah? First of all, no one really wants to see me dancing, so that is good anyway. Yeah? But you should encrypt like everyone is. Encryption is the only tool you have to be absolutely sure that you are the only one who controls access to your data. So encrypt everything, and um, that's what we should do also when using Keycloak. So, um, First of all, we need a few uh, certificates for uh, usage and I prepared them already. I have a root certificate. Um, I have a certificate for localhost usage, which is signed with the root certificate. Uh, everything is uh, self-signed. And for the second part, uh, when it comes to user authentication, I have uh, a client certificate for Fred Flintstone, our demo user for today. But first of all, let's uh, focus on the root certificate and the localhost certificate for securing Keycloak with uh, HTTPS, uh, the communication layer channel. And uh, if you wonder how to um, create these certificates, I put a link in the video description um, to a, a GIST and where I explain uh, how to create some certificates, some self-signed certificates for uh, development usage. So um, we have this um, localhost um, certificate and uh, the uh, localhost um, key. And if we go to our um, Keycloak configuration, as always, I'm using Docker for Keycloak uh, demos. And um, the Keycloak Docker image comes with a convenient uh, script. So you yeah, only have to put your certificate and key file to um, certain directories and name it properly. And um, the um, script will pick it up automatically and create everything uh, what is needed. I will show you later on uh, the script where you can find it and if you have to implement it to yourself. So you can um, use this as a, as a blueprint perhaps. So um, I'm using Keycloak uh, version 14. Um, um, it's, it's working with, with pretty all uh, Keycloak versions. And um, the interesting part is the volumes part where I map the, the localhost certificate and the localhost key file into um, the, the container uh, to a, a directory named uh, etc x509 https and naming the certificate file tls cert and um, the same with the key file put it also to etc x509 https and name it tls.key um, you have to use these bo uh, both um, uh, file names tls cert and tls key uh, that the um, convenience um, script can pick these um, information up and uh, use them when uh, starting the server. So when we now start the server with the Docker Compose up, and uh, then we can see that uh, one of the first things the um, container would do is uh, creating the HTTPS key store. That's here, creating HTTPS key store via OpenShift service. That's the um, convenience script I talked about and HTTPS key store successfully created at. And um, the script creates all proper 
um, configuration entries in the standalone XML for the Elytron subsystem, which is handling all the security and the HTTPS handling in the Wildfly server. So then we can start up the server and um, switch to the browser where we can call keycloak localhost. Of course, it's uh, also running on port 8080, and that's um, the regular HTTP part. So here it is, and um, we can access the, the console, of course, in a regular way, admin admin or admin user, and uh, that's fine. But we can also um, access it through um, HTTPS. Just have to switch um, the URL and the port to the 8443 default HTTPS port, and then we can access Keycloak again. Of course, we're accessing Keycloak through another um, host name and port, so we have to authenticate again. And you see it's secured, connection secure, and we can see it's verified by Dasnico, and um, that's because we um, or I um, imported the root certificate uh, before to have um, the verification. Um, that's in Firefox, view certificates. And if I go to Desnico, I have a root certificate from uh, n-k.de, that's my domain, and I can view it. And that's my self-signed root certificate. Um, and the local host certificate is um, signed with this root certificate. So the browser knows this uh, certificate authority and can use the, um, the TLS certificate. So everything is fine. Everything is secured by TLS. That's all you have to do. That's not pretty much. Just provide a TLS, uh, a TLS certificate and TLS key file um, for your uh, container. And um, then the magic script uh, does everything for you. So the magic script I'm talking about, the convenience script, is uh, part of the Keycloak Containers uh, repository. And you can um, see it at the, the GitHub repository, Keycloak, Keycloak Containers, and go to Keycloak Containers Server Tools x509.sh. And this is the um, file where everything uh, of this magic happens. So you don't have to worry about um, what's um, going on here. If you need to um, use it in your own environment, which is not Docker-based, you can use this script as a good uh, starting point and to adjust it to your needs. So Keycloak on TLS, on HTTPS works cool. So let's move on to um, client authentication. So for client authentication with uh, TLS certificates using mutual TLS, of course, we need a client certificate. And uh, in this video, I will use um, user authentication as an example for client authentication. And I created a Fred Flintstone certificate, as already mentioned, um, and signed it with the um, previously also used root certificate. So we have a, a self-signed Fred Flintstone certificate, also a key file and everything we need. Um, and uh, it's signed with the, our own root certificate. And um, to use this um, uh, client authentication um, with certificates signed by our own root certificate, uh, we have to provide this um, root certificate to um, the Docker container. We can use um, here for two uh, entries in, in our config. Um, the first thing I have to map also the root certificate cert file um, to our um, Docker container. Uh, for convenience, I put it to the same directory as uh, the TLS and uh, certificate and key file. Um, you don't have to do, uh, don't have to use the same uh, directory. It's just for convenience, I'm using the same um, directory, but um, I'm using my own uh, name. There's no um, previously declared uh, file name you have to use. Just map it somewhere into the container and then set the environment and variable, uh, variable called x509 ca bundle and tell um, 
where your root certificate is located. Um, you can specify multiple root certificates or certificate authorities um, with this um, environment variable. You just have to append them using a space and then put some other um, file path in here. So when setting the x 500 ca bundle environment file, the same script um, which previously set up the um, HTTPS TLS usage um, will um, build up the internal trust store so that Keycloak is able to trust the client certificate which, uh, which the, the client or the browser will provide to uh, Keycloak. So that's all you have to do. Again, um, if you're using uh, the Docker image, the container, um, you don't have to do that much. And in case you don't use the Docker container, you can also use this script, the X509 script for a uh, starting point. And uh, it's the second part in the script um, where um, the trust saw is built up. So um, good, let's start uh, the container in the background, Docker Compose up. And uh, again, the first thing the container will do is creating the um, HTTPS key store in here. That's what we also saw at the first example. And after the key store is set up successfully, um, the trust store will be set up. And this takes some time. And you see creating key clock trust store, trust store successfully created and importing certificates from systems Java CA certificate bundle into key clock trust store and using the own um, CA, our self-signed CA. And we have the trust store JKS. And uh, now we can wait until key clock is started go to our browser here again and say localhost 8080. So Keycloak server is ready and uh, we can again log in. Admin admin or test administrator. We're still on the HTTP port, not HTTPS, but uh, we're creating now a realm called x509 and uh, resetting um, this realm for um, SSL or TLS um, communication only. All requests require SSL. And um, we have to do some um, authentication configuration because um, the standard flow doesn't use X509 certificates and we now have to provide an own authentication flow. We just do a copy of the regular browser flow, call it uh, x509 browser, and delete everything we don't need for now. We don't need Kerberos. We don't need identity providers. And um, uh, that's the regular browser forms. For a better overview, I didn't, I'm deleting the OTP because we don't need the OTP now. And um, we need the cookie still for a single sign-on. Otherwise, the single sign-on will uh, would not work, of course. And now we add a new execution, uh, execution at the top level. And uh, as a provider, we're selecting the X509 validate username form. Click Save and um, Put it up to uh, as the second um, entry. So um, newly entry, newly created entries will be at the bottom of the list. So you have to push it up with the arrows here to have it on the second um, second position and click on alternative. So um, it's one of the alternatives to authenticate a user. Additionally, we have to um, config configure this um, validator. So let's call it uh, x509 config and um, our user identity source where uh, from where in the secure in, in, in the certificate we get the information uh, which user this is. Um, we're using the subject's email because um, we're using we have specified the email address and we're identifying the user with its uh, email 
So let's say a subject email, you can do a lot of other configuration, um, also using regular expressions to get it from the um, subject uh, distinguished name, um, using uh, a lot of other things. Um, for this demo, easiest way is to use the, the email address because we um, provide the email in the certificate. And um, the user mapping method, it's also important. Uh, how we recognize the internal uh, user in Keycloak, it's a username or email. So above, we're using the email from the certificate and identifying the internal Keycloak user by the username or email. Uh, you can also identify the user through a custom um, attribute and you can specify the attribute from um, the attribute name from the user so that the, the attribute from the certificate and the attribute in your user has to uh, be the same. But we're using username or email. So um, we don't need the name of the attribute because we don't use the attribute. Um, we can check um, the validity of the um, certificate and we can also turn on um, checking the certificate against a certification re uh, revocation list if we have one. Um, I have no, none of them and um, so yeah, that's it. What we have to configure for um, this uh, little demo. Click save. Uh, it's been saved, created. Okay, and then to use this um, X509 browser flow in the browser flow, of course, we have to uh, select it here and save the bindings. And um, of course, we have to create a user. There's no user available. We add a user named uh, Fred Flintstone. So um, the Fred, uh, email address will be fredflintstone at example.com. So the um, certificate is um, created with this um, email address, fredflintstone at example.com. Uh, and the first name, of course, is Fred. And the last name is Flintstone. The user is enabled. Clicking Save. And uh, yeah, we don't, we don't need to give, give credentials because we uh, don't uh, um, authenticate the user via password or OTP or whatever, so, but only the um, client certificate and that's um, put to the client's browser. So that's what we um, had to do. Then we can uh, start in a new private window with our local host, uh, but now we have to use um, the HTTPS port. Okay, so now we get asked um, which certificate we want to use because we configured Keycloak to request a certificate with our X509 browser flow. And um, this is um, in this demo. This is just uh, one uh, step uh, too early, but because we don't authenticate ourselves yet uh, in the account um, application, um, but we're accessing Keycloak, so Keycloak requests the certificate. In a real world um, example, if your application runs on another domain, of course, this um, request, this certificate re request will only appear when you um, access the Keycloak host and uh, doing um, the authentication. And we can select uh, the Fred Flintstone um, certificate in here, which we previously um, imported in, um, in Firefox. So um, if we have a look to our settings in Firefox and have the certificates, the client certificates, we have the Fred Flintstone um, certificate, which is also located under uh, Dasnico. And we can see um, organization Dasnico and a common name is uh, n-k.de. And we um, signed it with the root certificate of n-k.de. So um, our browser knows, uh, knows this certificate. And um, now we can um, use this um, certificate, clicking OK. And uh, yeah, connection is timed out. Nice. Try again. So nothing happened because the uh, account console um, does not need to do an authentication um, 
But if we now click on sign in, we are presented a confirmation that um, the browser or Keyclock recognized the X509 certificate from Fred, uh, Fred Flintstone of our browser, which we selected before. And um, the email address is fredflintstone at example.com and you will be logged in as Fred Flintstone. So um, if you remember, we created the user with the username fred.flintstone and set the email address to fredflintstone at example.com. That's um, in here. And um, that's the Keyclock user, the Fred Flintstone in here. You will be logged in as this um, user. We can continue. And now we're rock, uh, logged in as uh, Fred Flintstone. We see it in the upper right corner, Fred Flintstone. And if we click on personal information, we see uh, our Fred, Fred and Flintstone names. So we can sign out again and um, close this window. Using this, go to our e-clock. Here we see Fred Flintstone, that's the username. And uh, yeah, if we do it again, opening a new window, you can select um, the certificate. In here also you can see the email address Fred Flintstone issued by our own root certificate, which we put to um, the Keyclock server and the script built up a trust source so the Keyclock server can trust this um, certificate. And if we sign in, it can be used here and we can just uh, continue to, um, to sign in. And uh, one more option I want to show you if you go to uh, the authentication, uh, the configuration of our X509 config, uh, config and um, switch the, uh, at the button, the bypass identity confirmation. That's the prompt we saw when we log in. And um, just do it again. If we now click on sign in, we just directly signed in. We don't need to um, confirm anything. Um, Keycloak just mapped it. Uh, automatically and we're logged in. We don't need to confirm anything. We just Fred Flintstone at this point. So as you could see, uh, securing your Keycloak server with HTTP and HTTPS and doing mutual TLS and authentication with X509 client certificate is not that um, complicated and not that complex. Just need some um, uh, certificates and key files in case you have uh, self-signed um, certificates and put it to um, the container. Again, here, um, the HTTPS TLS cert and the TLS key file um, with the naming conventions for the HTTPS communication, securing the transport layer and um, putting your root uh, certificate authority to the container or to the Keycloak server. Um, to build up the uh, internal trust store to trust external um, certificates and uh, specifying the X509 CA bundle environment variable where your um, certificate authority is uh, located. And um, if you don't use um, the uh, Keycloak um, container, the, the Docker container, if you have a, um, a manual or, or um, a legacy installation, um, you can use this X509 um, script, which is used in the container as a good blueprint and starting point to create your own uh, script with uh, what, uh, everything you, what you need in this case. Um, yeah, and again, uh, if you want to know uh, how to create all these um, certificates, I put a link in the video description uh, to a gist of uh, my uh, GitHub repository where I explain or have a short des uh, description uh, how to create those self-signed certificates for yeah, mostly development usage or internal usage um, in your company or wherever. Okay, thanks uh, for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of my uh, other recordings. Um, if you like this video, give me some thumbs up and um, share it, uh, tell it to other people. And uh, yeah, if you've made any experience with uh, TLS and HTTPS and Keycloak, put it down in the comments. Uh, I will appreciate it. And yeah, see you next time. Thanks. Bye bye. <laughs>